Hello, dear ones. It's wonderful to be with you again. Your family, your dear ones, you're at home with Jim and Joy. And today's a very special day as we remember September 11th, the attack upon our nation. So many people praying and seeking the Lord. We pray for all the souls that perished at that time, all the families impacted and affected. You're not alone. And we pray for peace this day, the peace that passes all human understanding. We also remember another National Day of Remembrance for aborted children, September 13. The website is abortionmemorials.com. It's so important to humanize these children who indeed are human beings. From the very moment of conception through natural death, every life is precious. So people are gathering at burial sites where these babies have been aborted and they're interred properly, and also memorial sites. And it can be a great source of healing and hope. Also, we're uh, looking towards the International Week of Prayer and Fasting, September 20th through the 28th. Visit the website iwopf.org. There are some spirits that can't come out without prayer and fasting, mm -hmm. and so we pray that everybody would join together the 20th through the 28th. Enjoy show number two. And we've heard from numerous people. I know you want to share about that a little bit, and they've been encouraging us so much, and they're such an important part of the show. Why don't you share? Well, we had a wonderful week. It was a, a big stretch, a little scary, mm -hmm. and um, but we want to be obedient to God. And this is what God wants, and we want it too. Amen. And so we heard from so many of you, just really with encouraging words and uh, thoughts, and especially praying. But one viewer in particular who said in her living room, it's great, uh -huh. it's great, this is great. Well, who was that? It was my three-year-old granddaughter, Nina. She was so <laughs> excited because here she was in her home and there were Hanona and Babo on the television. Yeah. And so you and I all belong to a family. Nina thought it was so great because all the people that she loved were in her house. Mm -hmm. And our families is the place where we learn to love, where we learn to respect and where we learn to be a family. Yeah. Well, you're out there and you might not be in a place where there are familiar faces to you. You might be in a nursing home, you might be in the hospital, but we want you to know that we will be your familiar faces. You are at home with Jim and Joy. And at EWTN, it's 24 seven, turn on that dial and you are always a part of the family. You know, Joy, thinking about precious Nina, one of our 15 grandchildren, living in six with the Lord, and that she was in her own home. She has beautiful parents, and siblings, and it gets a little crazy in there every now and then. It I mean, does, we know that. Okay. I mean, so it's not perfect. But she was there safe, sound, loved, and then we popped on the screen. And, you know, it's, and she just said, this is great. And so what does she mean, this is great? You know, and, and we need to ask ourselves, what, what does she mean this is great? What's great is family. What's great is mom and dad, knowing that you are loved, knowing that you're conceived in love, knowing that people have made that commitment to you. This is the renewal that we need in our nation and that we need in the church. And as if it was not enough for her to have a parents, here, here come the grandparents, and she was a little disappointed that we didn't walk and out of And she likes the, us. She does like us that's very much. And uh, so she says, this is great. And that's what we hope to bring to you through our guests, through the conversations that we have here, the greatness of the family, the greatness of the human family, and that we are all brothers and sisters because God is our creator. And we were reading in our devotions just yesterday, there's a portion of scriptures that said, and our nation needs to hear this. The nations of the world needs to hear this. Do you not know that the one who created you is your father? Mm. And that's the Old Testament. And then, of course, we know in the New Testament how Jesus would pray to the father, Abba, Father, and that the spirit will witness to our spirit that we're the children of God. This is the spirit that we want to convey. Right. This is our Catholic faith to pray that every nation, every tribe, every tongue, no matter what religion or background and no religion at all, that somehow, some way there would be an awareness, we're yearning for family. Right. We really are yearning for family because it's stamped 
on our very image because God in and of himself is family. And we all want to belong. We all want to be needed. We all need to be taught to love. And the beautiful part about a family, and we have four children and 15 grands and everybody's married, it's constantly changing. So you have to constantly be changing with that. You have to constantly be dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to let go of pride. You have to let go of your opinion and your thoughts and just say, hmm, and learn as a good sister-in-law once told me, how am I gonna be a mother-in-law? I don't know how to be a mother-in-law. What am I gonna do? She said, I'm gonna give you some advice. Mind uh, your own business. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I don't know how to mind my own business apart from God. So the Holy Spirit would have to sit on me and say, Joy, mind your own business. Don't say anything. Yeah, it really is, I don't know if it's a balancing act or, or being where people need to be at that point, that age, that stage of their life to try and give guidance and direction, but then they get to a so certain point in life and they're not asking for your advice anymore. As long asking. as they're under the, your roof, there's something there. But then they get married, and then suddenly you're an in-law, right? Yeah. Um, but I think family is the place where we're committed to blowing upon the sail mm -hmm. of the other person's life, you yeah. see? I, I want my children and my grandchildren to get to the destination, ultimately, that God wants for them. That's what we need for our nation. We need to humble ourselves before Almighty God, seek His face, pray, humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways here mm -hmm. on 9-11. Right. That's right. And, and here as we're going to uh, abortion memorial sites because the sanctity of human life is the fundamental principle upon which everything else is built. So life, marriage, and the family, it's God's plan to transform the world and that's our commitment here. You know, Joe, I was just thinking about uh, when we were welcomed into the family, Deacon uh, Steltemeyer, mm -hmm. God rest his soul. And I remember when he got to know us and we became you know, more a part of EW, he said, mm, not much of a part at all, but he said, welcome to the family. Right. And I want you to know in all sincerity, from EWTN to you, when we say welcome to the family, we mean it. So get ready to call us, 205-271-2980 or toll free, 800-221-9460. We're gonna take a short break. You're at home with Jim and Joy. We're coming back with Raymond Arroyo, known to many of you. It's gonna be a great conversation. We'll be right back. back while well, you are at home with Jim and Joy and today we are delighted to have a familiar face and voice to you Raymond Arroyo who is the creator and the host of the world over the longest running live show out of EWTN yeah, 19 no years <laughs> I know <laughs> married 20 years and yeah. three beautiful children mm, Raymond you. welcome to at home thank with Jim you. and Joy God bless to you, you all God and to be to with you. you I think you're taking this home thing a little too seriously <laughs> I walked in, I have to tell you, I walked in this morning. They were here canoodling together at 6 a.m. This is not a good sign, guys. Your children are missing you at your real home. Please right. go there occasionally. But no, this is great. Congratulations it's, on the thank show. You. Thank it's you. It's a wonderful set, and they all did such a great, great job. The kids? No, the, the <laughs> staff Oh, here. I thought you had them come in and build it. No, I, you know, no, I put they, mine right to work. That's how you keep them, yeah, you know, that's right. sane. Well, tell us. Tell us about your new series that's yeah. coming out, yeah. a conversation about the world over. Tell sure. us what's happening with that. Well, Conversations the World Over is really, it's a way to revisit some of the bigger interviews we've done over the years, the more important ones. It's world leaders, spiritual leaders, um, people well-known and not so well-known, Hollywood stars and people you may never have, have known, but they have something, a message that contemporaneously has new resonance. And when we went back and started looking through the yeah. archives, yeah. You hear things and see things you never saw the first time. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a way for people to tap into that. Uh, again, if you've never seen the show, it, it'll be a, a revelation for you because it's the first time you've seen it. Some of these interviews are just uh, among my favorites. The, I have been blessed to interview 
and know really all of my heroes with mm -hmm. the exception of maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a miraculous great yeah. ride. Yeah. And, uh, and so I want to continue sharing that with people. And the weekly show, you know, you're kind of in the news and you're moving along, and those are great, but you have these evergreens that I think and we all thought needed another area yeah. so people will get a chance it's, to you see put them. so much work into it and then you think well everybody's seen that and they really haven't no they haven't so mm -hmm. no, some no. of your best interviews may never have been seen right right and so this is great to have that up. when does it air 5 30 p.m okay. eastern time yeah. on wednesday nights yeah. and uh right before the nightly news show 5 30 eastern time i have to keep telling myself yeah. that it repeats sometime on thursday but i don't know what the time ewtn.com is the best place to go there because you go. They this know memory is forget yeah. it well raymond why don't you tell us about your beautiful family uh. your wife you will mm. celebrate your 20th wedding anniversary yeah, this november, in november time yeah. flies i know it three beautiful children yeah. so tell us about life at the arroyo house oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh great yeah it's uh well it's a little bit like a family reunion Union Day at the Soprano household. Oh, uh, no, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's loud. Um, we're not exactly a quiet people, as mm -hmm. you can tell. Mm -hmm. Rebecca is actually very quiet and, and staid. Um, and she's the, the rock in the family. Though after 20 years of exposure to my loud Paisan family, mm -hmm. she's caught up. Uh, yeah. she, she, she can keep up with the best of them. Um, the kids are wonderful. They all have their own personalities, as you know. Mm -hmm. One is never like the other. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex is 15, Lorenzo is 11, and Mariella is a little eight-year-old. So I love the it's a, um, No, it's Beautiful. great. We, they're, they're wonderful children. Um, Rebecca is a spectacular mother. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always tell people, particularly young people who are on the fence, should I marry this person? Should I propose to them? Mm -hmm. What should I do? Marry young mm -hmm. and audition them first. Mm -hmm. Rebecca and I met, I was directing a play in New York, The Little Foxes, and she was the last day of auditions. There were like four days of auditions. She walked in and auditioned for me. At the time, I was dating somebody else who was next to me during the audition process. Ooh. And it's very interesting because you get up when you're directing, you get up and you read the scene with the person. And I said, oh, you're great. Come back tomorrow. We'll do a callback, you know, because I have other people coming in. I want to see how you all work together. So she left. Rebecca left. Yeah. And this girl I was dating at the time said, uh, so what do you think? I said, well, she's fantastic. <laughs> this is just I the think I, gonna marry She's her. fantastic. <laughs> this is just the one. She said, I don't like the way you looked at her. Ooh. Women always oh, know. No. And I said, you're crazy. Oh, what are you talking women about? Women know. I yes, love it. They yep. do. So it was there. I don't no. like that energy. Yeah, yeah, well, it was good. It was good energy. Yeah. Good, good instinct. Yeah. Bad but, for uh, the other girl. She, bad for her. <laughs> but, you know, now you, you win some, you lose That's some. right. Raymond, mm -hmm. you were born and raised in New Orleans? Born and raised in New Orleans. And then with your family, where did you live in New Orleans as well with your kids? And you yeah, were, we were. We how were many years outside of New Orleans? Oh. Uh, well, we were here for a couple of years, okay. and then when Alex was born, my family was feeling, you know, well, hey, we want to see the grandkids. Right. Do you think right. you could come here? Mm -hmm. So Mother Angelica and I had a conversation, and um, and I went to her and I said, you know, the whole family's in New Orleans, and mm -hmm. do you think I could go down there and fly up mm -hmm. and do the show? Sweetheart, that'd be better for you. Go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. I went. Yeah. Uh, we lived there for five happy years until Katrina hit. Right. Um, frankly, I'd be there now if I couldn't. I still spend a lot of time in New Orleans. I'm there mm -hmm. all the time. I'm aching that I won't be at the Saints game uh, next weekend. But uh, It's amazing when you say, you know, then Katrina hit. And I could see yeah. it in your eyes and in your face, sadness. Yeah. I, I, I well, see it that. is. No, it's, you're, it was a terrible, I mean, I mean, it's, it's a wrenching thing. Yeah. Um, it was, and the way it happened, I was here when it happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, the night before. I was doing my show and Rebecca called, no, I was watching the Weather Channel in one of the guest houses here. And I saw the trajectory of this thing and they mm -hmm. said Katrina was going to go toward Florida. But the way it was going, it looked like the tracking Camille had, Hurricane Camille, which was devastating mm -hmm. for the Gulf Coast. Yeah. And I called Rebecca at 3 a.m. I said, pack your things. I land at 9.30 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Pack enough clothes for the kids for mm -hmm. a few days. Mm -hmm. Our mother-in-law was staying with us. Mariella was born nine days before Katrina. She was supposed to come that week, oh, okay? Um, but thank God she was born yeah. early. So mm -hmm. Rebecca's postpartum. Right. She's got the little infant. Mm -hmm. We've got the two boys. My mother-in-law's in town. And you we got all, life going I on. I got life going on. <laughs> so we pack into the van. Oh, we drive God back up to Birmingham mm -hmm. and stayed with the nuns for a little bit. Lived here for about six months. Mm -hmm. And then finally made our way back to, uh, to D.C. But you look back, and it's awful and wrenching, right. uh, as the experience was. The important thing there is that this is all 
passing. Mm -hmm. The things we think we have, even our possessions and our homes, right. our memories, the mm -hmm. things that we imagine our memories to be, the photo albums, right. and the, all of that can and will eventually leave you. Right. For us, it left a little quicker than we would yeah. have liked, yeah. but um, yeah. at the end, it was a good experience. And I hate to say something so traumatic and awful because for so many in New Orleans, it was not a good experience. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up being life-changing for us. It, we grew closer. Right. We appreciated the things that matter. Right. Um, personally, I don't cling to the stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're all, the, the, you know, life is leaving us. Right, it's we, it, it, Every day, mm -hmm. you know, I would say it's Sondheim song, every day a little death, and I hate to be morbid, but, um, it, it, you know, so we have to live. Mm -hmm. We have to live to the full mm -hmm. and fully engage. Right. And I think uh, Katrina taught me that. Yeah. Taught all of us that. Right. How did your children fare? I mean, there are so many families now today in the celebration of 9 11 yeah. whose fathers and mothers they yeah. lost. How did your children fare? How did you help them to cope and yeah. navigate that it with was, their it faith? Was, it was traumatic. Mm. I mean, there's no way, uh, no way around it. It was traumatic. Mm. Our faith was the only thing that carried us through. And yeah. Mother, Mother Angelica, who at that point was still communicating a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I saw her with regularity, and they really helped us through mm -hmm. the sisters. Mm -hmm. on mass help so us through the process. Let's pause here for a minute. And we want to hear from you. So you've got Raymond Arroyo here. He's the guy who always asks all the questions. You can ask <laughs> him questions. I love this. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Send us a Shoot tweet. The guest. <laughs> Send us a tweet at EWTN, hashtag Jim and Joy. We'll take your questions. Give us a call, 205-271-2980 or toll free 800-221-9460. We're here to listen to you and for you to share with Raymond. Yeah. Raymond, when you were sharing about what happened with Katrina, just the devastation and how it, it helps you to see the most important things, mm -hmm. I think for me that really happened with Joy when she's a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And I could remember when we got that diagnosis and yeah. we didn't know how serious it was going to be and it was very, all cancer serious, it was yeah. very serious. And I could remember, you know, we were reflecting and thinking and sharing and and overall, I thank God because I, you know, when we spoke, I said to her, you know what? Overall, what we've done in our life, because you start reflecting on your life. Yeah. You know, what have I done? What did we do? And there were a few things that you know, maybe we should do differently. And I said to her, you know, honey, because I don't know where this is going you know, mm -hmm. with your life. Mm -hmm. We're believing you're going to be healed and so yeah. on. But um, I feel good about what we've done in life. And I feel like we have a foundation. And like, because mm -hmm. this is the most important thing. Nothing seems to matter very much at yep. all anymore except mm -hmm. you and having you another day. Yeah. Um, so I think that's important for people to hear, and I don't know how yeah. that's worked its way out. You know, our, our, our vows, for better or worse, for yeah. richer or poor, for sickness and in health, yeah. to love and to cherish, till we're parted by death. Yeah. And when that question mark comes up over your head, and that's mm -hmm. what I said to Joy, I said, you know, honey, we all have a question mark over our head. You know, when? Right. Our time. I said, it just came up over your head, honey, you know, yeah. and, and we just need to believe the best, but evaluate our lives. Mm -hmm. And you can get really shaken to your core and well, you don't want to come up on those times and say, man, we really blew it, you know? No, no, no. Well, we had a, we had a similar thing. Not mm -hmm. as, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it was quite as mm -hmm. uh, ominous. Uh, cancer, uh, is cancer. Uh, cancer is cancer. Cancer is cancer. Rebecca had a yeah. cancer scare last year. Um, mm -hmm. It was, thank God it was contained to a mm -hmm. spot. Mm -hmm. It's out. We right. took care of it. Yeah. Um, but we had the same sort of yeah. mm -hmm. touch and go. She's very strong, though. Rebecca is really a rock. Um, but it was, it was. I mean, you know, when 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 something's wrong with Mama, something's right. wrong with the whole family. Right. It right. ripples through the kids, sure. everybody. You know, we all mm -hmm. um, were affected. But thank God, it. We came out of it. Um, and you do, you you do mm -hmm. realize the fleeting nature of all of this oh, yeah. and when people ask you know why why do you do you're doing television you're right. producing these things right. you're writing why are you doing right. it? because i i can see now mm -hmm. the time is it's contracting so it's very quick mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. all going to be over like that right and mm -hmm. i you know not to sound sondheim again but children and art those are the things we leave behind mm -hmm. children and art mm -hmm. and the way you affect other people the way you touch their lives right. but I, I you said it earlier the family is is truly the reflection of the whole society and the best hope or the damnation of that society. That's right. And I worry today when you have more than half of your population now, 52 percent single people mm -hmm. and the rest of the country married eh, right. and divorces up by half. Right. Uh, this is not any way for kids to be raised. This is not a way to create the next generation or a society. Mm -hmm. So I, we take that very seriously. I mean, Rebecca spends so much time with the children, right. um, one on one. I do too, but 
uh, you know, in between yeah. work. Right. But she's there. She's at home mm -hmm. with them. And you know what a sacrifice that can oh, be. Oh, yeah. It's a heck of a lot easier to go to work. Well, you know, <laughs> you know? and I, I did it for 22 years being a stay-at-home mom. I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it was a sacrifice, a, a financial sacrifice, sure. but it was a commitment that we made as a couple, as a family, and saying, mm -hmm. because when it's over, I mean, I can't, like, call them up and tell them what to do now. They've right. grown. It's over. Yeah. And so that the time to mentor and to disciple, but not only to that, to pour yourself mm -hmm into another human being, you know, yeah. for God's glory to say, Lord, I hope I did my yeah. best. I hope I love them the way you wanted yeah. me to, I, you know? I think we got some people that are people. emailing us. People. They're okay. out here. They want to speak to Raymond. All right, we're going to go. Dear Raymond, who is the inspiration for your children's book? Oh. Mary Beth from Nebraska. Oh, well, I have a new children's book coming out. It's called Kerman Derman <laughs> and the Relic of Perilous Falls. It is a supernatural thriller for kids. It's an adventure story. Um, you were talking a moment ago about sharing your values, your ideas right. with kids. We often forget, and, and I think the reason we've lost so much ground with children particularly, we're good at lecturing them, we're bad at giving them the things that truly shape their world, which right. is music, film, literature, mm -hmm. television. Right. And when you give them a fictional world to enter into, they put on the skin and the heart and the mind of another person, right. teaches them empathy mm -hmm. right. really quickly. Mm -hmm. And it also informs them about the world and the pitfalls of the world, those who love you and those who don't, the dangers, the guardrails, and where you should be going or maybe not going. Mm -hmm. So as a fiction writer, which is something new to me, you, it's, it's very bad when you come out with predetermined ends. The trick is, I think, to ask the right questions mm -hmm. so that the audience then will answer it themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what I do with this series. Yeah. But it is a wild, fun ride. Mm -hmm. um, I was inspired by my children because yeah. I saw what they were reading or not reading yeah. mm -hmm. and talking to librarians and bloggers and educators. Th what they told me is, uh, boys, we have a real literacy problem oh, yeah. with boys. Mm -hmm. 22 million adults are mm -hmm. added to the illiteracy rate every year. Mm -hmm. And one in four retirees cannot read the prescription mm -hmm. on their medication. Right. This, right. Is a, this is a societal mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. But it seemed to me I wanted to do something that boys and girls could read, but people of all ages. Mm -hmm. This is a book, and the way it's turned out, it, it's a family saga. Um, and, and when you ask who inspired it, certainly my family mm -hmm. partly inspired it mm -hmm. because I, when I was reading this, when we read along with them, we read to them and make them read to us, which is a great literacy tip. Right. Um, but what I discovered is in so many of these stories, it is a kid alone, either orphaned or running or looking for their parents. Mm -hmm. All these children's stories, that's right. the kind of right. paradigm. I said, why don't we ever have a family drama, mm -hmm. a full saga? Right. Why can't the whole family go on an adventure? Right. Now, the dysfunctional crop that I've written here, this family, right. they are a wild group, the Derman family. But they've got secrets, they love each other, they go to extraordinary lengths at time to protect their kid who has a supernatural gift. Mm -hmm. And you see those struggles we all have as parents. What I, the amazing thing is adults love it, older people love it, and kids love the ride, but they're all getting different things from the same story, which is well, delicious Well, it sounds to me. exciting. It's fun. It's coming out next spring, okay. and uh, I'll be talking a lot about it as it, as it comes, but we're really excited. Well, good. We got a phone call. Sal from California. Sal, what's your question? Hi, guys. Uh, I had a question uh, both for uh, you, Jim and Joy, and uh, for Raymond. Uh, I'm involved in a homeschool co-op, and with today being 9-11, we had wondered, you know, with so many small children that we're teaching these days, what age do you, would you say would be uh, appropriate to discuss uh, tragic events, historical tragic events that uh, kids will eventually need to know about? And if and when we do, you know, what is an appropriate way to discuss these things, you know, whether it be in the personal family or just in the world, stuff that they will have to be exposed to eventually? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kids, kids today are exposed to things. Mm -hmm. Frankly, we had no contact. I right. didn't know jihadis mm -hmm. and right. beheadings and right. uh, uh, you know different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. We had just no concept of mm -hmm. this. But the truth of the matter is, because of the onslaught of media, mm -hmm. the kids are going to hear it at the grocery. They're going to hear it at the airport. They're right. going to hear it in the in the plane. Mm -hmm. They're going to hear it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you can't live in a bubble. Right. Those days are over. And mm -hmm. people, I, I worry a little bit when people say, "Oh, you know, we we're not going to expose our kids to any media." 
uh, they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. And you want to be the guide. You want to be the navigator right. of this information and help them interpret the world. Yeah. Um, in many ways, the reason I wrote this book, fiction is about helping people have a compass to understand things that they haven't yet experienced, mm -hmm. for children anyway. Right. We as adults have that same obligation. So when you see the 9-11, the towers, right. Engage them in the conversation. If they ask the question, answer them at their understanding and age level. Right. They don't need to know no. 3,000 people right. and body mm -hmm. parts fell. Right. It's right. too much. Mm -hmm. um, but you tell them what they need to know at that point, answer them honestly, and the next time you can continue that, mm -hmm. that conversation. But my children, we talk about everything. And the dinner table, as you all know, we were talking right. about this earlier. Mm -hmm. There's no better place right. to teach them your world mm -hmm. and to share your stories, right. which I think is crucial and we don't do enough of. You know, when you share those moments, I mean, you're talking mm -hmm. about surviving cancer. Right. When you share that at a table, right. the impact of that is far different than you giving them a checklist of, here's what you do when you do cancer, right. because they're all engaged yeah. in the story. Right. Yeah, and, and the beautiful right. thing, too, mm -hmm. is um, in doing that, parents, we need to be the filter Yep. I mean, we need to protect them. We, we need to let them know the world is real and mm -hmm. it's evil. And, but God is greater. And so you really um, fill them with faith. If you don't do that, we are the domestic church. Right. I mean, that's our responsibility and God is counting on us. I mean, we don't, those are the questions and all of the answers that we give to them because we are full of God. And we could say, this is scary and yeah. there is evil in the world, but God is with us. And no matter what, we're never gonna be separated from him. Yeah. You know, and, and to really, I mean, we did that so many times for our children. And even with social media and things coming mm -hmm. in, we did have the beauty of raising our children yeah, before, before it Twitter got crazy, crazy, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I would still take some DVDs and crack them over my knee and say, <laughs> are you for real? <laughs> I mean, are you really listening to this in my car? Uh -huh. You know, and we, yeah, because you've got to say, you can't do this because yeah. I have to filter this for you. Your mind, it belongs to God. It doesn't yeah. belong to this. Yeah. And you have to sort, you know, all of that out for you them. Know, we're, we're, we're uh, you know, my, my 15 year old is now, you know, he wants to reach right. out. I need to have this account and that right. account. I said, well, Pally, mm -hmm. here's the deal. You can have an account. I have the password. Right. right. And I think also, I believe, I'm not going to go into any further <laughs> details for, for fear of revealing the truth, but... I believe in policing and spying That's on right. them as mm -hmm. long as they're under my roof. I totally Because they're my agree. responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if he does something mm -hmm. that he picks up anywhere, I'm responsible. That's right. So I'm fully responsible. Right. And I think you've got to stay with your children. And I use those opportunities. Rebecca's great about this, too. When we hear, a music, you know, we're at the right. Target and right. the, the song comes on about, right. you know, I want to, mm -hmm. you know, right. whatever. It, shake it, break it, the whole break thing. Break it yeah. and whatever, <laughs> grind it. It's a family show. <laughs> yeah, but I, and, you know, let's not go any further, Joy. But uh, and we'll take it and say, do you understand why that right. is demeaning? Right. You don't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. Would you want to mm -hmm. be that person? Right. And then you kind of, you're teaching them through the pop culture. Mm -hmm. You're using this thing that could be very destructive and turning it mm -hmm. to your advantage. Right. I think we should do that across the right. board mm -hmm. um, but again it demands as you know total surrender total involvement mother Teresa's mm -hmm. term total surrender and you know there are days where being a parent you just want to it's exhausting <laughs> it is Forget and, it. And when ch when the children were little I was physically exhausted mm -hmm. when we did teenagers wow. I was emotionally exhausted wow. I mean I just wanted them to go away it was like <laughs> be adults already and, and figure this out it's, we were emotionally <laughs> exhausted it is. and I had twin girls mm. doing high school it was just a lot mm -hmm. the thing that keeps coming up to me is is you've got to make time and, and just a lot of parents just are not making the time mm -hmm. true. so much could be done just simply being with them spending time mm -hmm. sharing your values with them yeah. okay we're gonna take another question dear Raymond why do you think the media is trying so hard to corrupt the children through marketing TV shows music and etc and it seems mm -hmm. that parents would be wise and only let their kids access safe content. Mark from Rid Ridgewood, Queens, New York. Huh, Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. um, I, look, they see your kids as a cheap and easy mark. Right. They know that children are easily manipulated, young kids are easily manipulated, so they go for the lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. Look, mm -hmm. there are television networks and executives, some of whom I've met, mm -hmm. and they will tell you, 
you want to get an eyeball, you flash a girl running around in a bikini. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easy, right. it's easy, and you always get a pop in the mm -hmm. ratings, you mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. we, we have to A, police some of that content and try to keep our kids from it. Um, but we also, I think, have to use those opportunities and don't give in to everything just because the other kid is doing right. it or my friend's doing this mm -hmm. or this one wants that. Mm -hmm. I, children are growing up far too fast today. Mm -hmm. And I can mm -hmm. truly say one of the things I love about our kids, they all still have a sense of wonder and awe. Yes. And we worked hard to mm -hmm. inculcate that. Mm -hmm. And part of that comes by giving them, showing them life examples that uplift, that challenge, and showing them that there's a world beyond this veil, mm -hmm. beyond the walls mm -hmm. and the things mm -hmm. and the people we can touch. There is a reality there. Mm -hmm. And it is just as exciting, fascinating, and, and worthy of your attention as what you can see and perceive with your fingers and eyes. Um, th and that's part of, that's the other reason mm -hmm. I decided to write this series. It's yeah. a supernatural series mm -hmm. and it's about the things you can see and can't mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And what happens to one who can see those things, mm -hmm. um, particularly when he makes bold choices yeah. and, and has is, to make bold choices. This is the pre-work we have to do mm -hmm. when those teachable moments come so that yep. the whole teaching doesn't come at that moment. No. We've been speaking about good and evil, right. what true beauty is, mm -hmm. so that when this happens, we can say that's what we've been sharing, what we're talking about. There really right. is an evil. And like you said, Joy, that... God will take every evil and turn it to a good. He'll take the curse, he'll turn it to a blessing. He'll mm -hmm. take death, he'll turn it to life. And this is one of those situations, whether it's a passing of a loved one you know, that we know, mm -hmm. or there's some kind of an attack, or there's some evil that they see. There really is evil in the world. Mm. Jesus said, we will have tribulation in this world, yeah. but be of good cheer, we've overcome the world. But you gotta be doing that beforehand, yeah. as yeah. well as then. Yeah, and you have to, you, you mentioned death. We had a death in the family, my grandmother died. Uh, and we went to the funeral, and we took the children mm -hmm. and it was an open casket yeah, and the whole right, thing and some friends right. said, oh, why would you do that exposing? Right. She's an mm -hmm. eight-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. Why would you expose her to mm -hmm. Well, it was important for her to right. see her great-grandmother. She knew her great-grandmother well. Mm -hmm. um, they all did. They were obviously upset, but it was an opportunity that this doesn't go on forever, That's right. that we're here and need to love and band together for this little time mm -hmm. we're given. Mm -hmm. And then you get to take that spirit that story, yeah. that example, right. carry it within you yeah. and pass it on to your children. Right. That's what this is about. Beautiful. And that is so important. You know, well, we lived in Alabama. We moved mm. here in 1980. From? From New Jersey. How did I, I guess? <laughs> I knew oh, my people. So we ahead. would go back and forth to New Jersey every year. And then we would visit all of our deceased loved ones. Yeah. So we would talk about them and our children mm. would say, are they alive or are they dead? <laughs> and um, because, you know, they were alive to us, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we'd tell them all the memories and we would take them to the cemetery mm. and yeah. just say, this, this is grandma and grandpa Pinto. Cause these, these were daddy's parents, yeah. you know? And then they're looking at you who they think you're gonna live forever. Yeah. And they say, dad doesn't have a mom and a dad. Mm. You know, and, and that is really good. I mean, yeah. forever, they, every time we went home, we they went don't there. Forget. Which is so important because we have to teach them that everything that we do in our bodies matters. Mm -hmm. In our bodies, in our minds, in our spirits, and we will give account one day. And so it's important. Mm -hmm. We would always tell our children, oh, your life, it's not your own. You've been bought with a price, great price, and mm -hmm. to Jesus alone do you belong. Mm -hmm. Now, you might want to go and dance with the devil for a, mm -hmm. a little while, but you coming back because you're his. Mm -hmm. And we would mark them and with the sign of the cross every day before they went out the door because all of hell was outside that door mm -hmm. waiting to infest them and affect them and mm -hmm. take them down. Mm -hmm. We got a call, Joy. Okay, so. this is a call from uh, Lisa from Indiana. Yes. Uh, I have a, I just want to say congratulations to Raymond and his beautiful wife and to you and Joy, Joy and uh, your husband. Jim. Thank God <laughs> you give me hope for our married people out there. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, we really do need hope. Yeah. And uh, it really seems like many have an amnesia that's taken hold yeah. that we don't even know what marriage is mm. and what marriage does. 
And exactly, so this yeah. is this is renewal. This is this is coming back home and coming to the family. Well, you know, I, I said earlier, and I think it's it, it's important because young people all the time. I see these people, and they're in perpetual date mode. Yes. They date for five <laughs> mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, hello, you're 43 years old. Right. Marry her or right. find somebody else. Right. Yeah. Time's a ticking, or and your expiration date is up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, I but I always encourage them, particularly young people, when you find somebody and your values align, this is key, mm -hmm. if, the, if your values and your faith particularly align, and you, f you feel you love this person, yeah. discern yeah. it and jump in. Right. Don't wait. Right. One of the beauties I think about, I mean, Mar Rebecca and I, we've dated for about two years, almost three years, um, and naturally, you know, the guy always thinks, oh, maybe not right now, maybe in another year. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca basically the said, you know, ready. <laughs> you know, um, you decide in the next four months because right. after that, I'm going to decide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I decided <laughs> real quick. Um, but I have to say this, there's something beautiful about, mm -hmm. and you know this, meeting someone young, marrying them, and now, 20 years later, mm -hmm. we not only have our lives and our children and our mm -hmm. home, we have history that right, is shared, right. and it is very difficult. You would be under pain of death mm -hmm. to remove or try to separate from that history. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost deeper than your love. It's yeah. beyond it yeah. because you've spent all of this time together, and I think that's critical. You want to grow up with this person. Mm -hmm. You don't just want to meet them when you're 50 and you've got your retirement accounts and right. you're going to come together and, you know, mm -hmm. then it'll be, you know, at the retirement home right. with Raymond and Rebecca. Right. That'll, <laughs> that'll be a new show EWTN will do. That would be a nice one. <laughs> at the Sunnybrook Farm with Raymond and Rebecca. I'm going to do that right after this show. We'll be on. There we go. Go but ahead. you know, it's it's really true because uh, for us in mar our marriage, and I am madly in love with my husband. It's not because Jim is perfect, and it's not because I just have so much love. It's because we really die to ourselves every single day mm -hmm. that Jesus would live inside of us. What do you do when you fight? Oh, oh, we fight so good. We do we too. We are so <laughs> passionate. We're wonderful fighters. We, we had a fight one time about love. How do you fight about love? Uh, mm -hmm. We fought about love. And uh, loud. we loud, oh, hands, good. everything's fine. Oh, good. But we teach a class. <laughs> we well, In premarital counseling, we taught a class on how to fight fair. Huh. Well, the teachers sometimes, we don't fight fair. No, we no we blow all the rules. That's right. Um, but, but we fight really well. <laughs> and, um, and our children fight really well. We've taught them all how to articulate well mm. and to work through an argument. The whole point is to get to re resolve it yeah. and then get on with your life. Yeah. You can't be bitter. You can't be angry. It's not about your way. No, you let it's it about what does God want? What's best? Mm -hmm. And not what's best for me or what's best for you. What's best for the family? What's best for all of us? Mm, yeah. And everybody gets included in that equation. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so, it's and so important. Me in that, you know, when we were first together and, and married, and um, I remember, you know, we were arguing about something. Mm -hmm. And she said, uh, you know, are you trying to win? And I said, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, win. <laughs> when we when we argue in my family, you know, we all try to win. But Joy said, you know, really ultimately, she said, I'm not. She mm -hmm. said, I just want to know what God wants for us yeah. in the situation. Yeah. And if you're right, that's fine. If I'm right, it's fine. But what does He want? I thought that was a, a novel idea. Uh, no, that, that was really. <laughs> I'll well, say because he really wanted to win, and he was wrong. So I had to bring a superior oh, okay, person yeah. in. How did I know? Like, God <laughs> help us, please. Yeah. You know, it was no, so no, perfect. No, no, it's, it's you do you do you do want to sort of win, and and there's a point where that gets old. Right. And now you know you were right. saying earlier, what's best for the family? Right. I always say, what's best for Mama? Right. If Mama's happy, the family's Everybody's happy. happy. It so is just, really true. Eat your crow and keep moving, fella. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, we got another email. Dear Jim and Joy, my son and his girlfriend are pregnant, and they're keeping the baby. What advice do you have for future grandparents? Susan from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Well, Bobo, you're a grandparent. What you have yeah. to say? Well, the good news is that it's about life. Yes. And so, however a child is conceived, it's precious. It's equal to every other child. So... We rejoice that this is about life and not about death. Um, I think the continued witness to marriage, I mean, these, this couple, if they are saying we love one another enough to be together, then they should love one another enough to be together in the covenant of marriage and really give themselves to one another fully and mm -hmm. faithfully and completely. They're being fruitful, uh, but we'll see fruitful in other ways. So I, I think as you have the opportunity, we need to witness to that. 
because their relationship is not simply about themselves. Their relationship is about this child. Mm -hmm. And so they've conceived this child. This child deserves to be part of a union where there is a covenant, right. for better or worse, for richer or poorer, sickness and health, to love and to cherish, to be parted by death. Right. That child deserves that, should be reared within that. We make mistakes or we commit sins, but I, I think the, the greatness, the grandeur of marriage and the family, instead of just cohabitating, right. how you say that, how you get it in, mm -hmm. if they don't want to hear that, you just continue to love them unconditionally yeah. and be with them. And have an honest conversation and see if they're mature enough mm -hmm. yeah. and ready to really raise a family right. and raise this child. Uh, adoption is an option, right. and, mm -hmm. and there are so many couples that can't have children yeah. who would welcome this child into right. a loving home mm -hmm. and a loving family. And if, if these two young people can't provide that to them now, that is, an, that is a beautiful yeah. gift right. as well mm -hmm. to, to you know, another family who, mm -hmm. who might be able to give them a life that, uh, you know, that they couldn't have imagined or that might not be a, a possibility. Raymond, you see and share with people and some unseen, seen and unseen. <laughs> you uh, got it. It's the unseen I worry cool. about. No, but, but you do. And what's your take on the culture of death and the culture of life? Do you see renewal? Do you see it falling apart? Uh, are the wheat and the tares coming up at the same time? Mm -hmm. What's your, your sense about what's going on in the country and going on in the world? What are the signs that you see? I, I think we are seeing a bit of a renaissance and an appreciation because we've come so low, mm -hmm. let's face it. Right. Um, I think young people particularly are aware of the choices that were made concerning their own lives mm -hmm. and they see the future and realize that they are the portal to it or it will be a closed door. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm actually very optimistic and hopeful. I see a new appreciation of life, um, not in the government, that's a different animal. Um, and we have to be very careful, I've been reporting on that extensively. I'm not crazy about this health care plan and its regime of uh, uh, pushing elderly people down the what I call the hospice chute. You know, they kind of want to send you right to, you don't have any care. You know, you're really, eh, you know, you're 65 years old. Your best days are behind you. You owe it to your children to really, right. you know, right to, here, here, sign the paper, you're in the hospice. Uh, this is a material view of life. We have to be very careful of that. And um, I, I hope and I think we're seeing a bit of a resurgence in, in awareness for that mm -hmm. and, and, and a love of life. And I hope so anyway. I hope Charlie, so too. Another call. Okay, we got Teresa who's calling us from New Hampshire. Teresa? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Uh, well, I called with a question for you, Joy, but first I want to say that all three of you have given me an affirmation. Um, I have a 15-year-old son. Mm -hmm. I have a terminal heart disease that I've had um, since actually diagnosed since about 2003. Mm -hmm. And my son is now in my seminary. But I did all those things that you guys were talking about, about filtering. And I was like, oh, I was the worst mother because I wouldn't let him do this or that. But in the end, he's come back and thanked me. Mm -hmm. But my question um, for you, Joy, was when your husband said you had that question mark over your head, I'm sorry, how did you deal with that? Because I don't really know what my time will be. And I, today's a, today is a weekday for me. I'm having trouble breathing. Mm -hmm. And it's not fixable heart disease. Yeah. Well, so. I think for me, um, I was really, it was a spiritual grace that God gave me. And I was really full of faith. And I, I, I use this illustration. I felt like God took me and stuck me in peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't move out of it. I couldn't move. And I knew that if I lived or if I died, I was in a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And I was really, no pun intended, but at home with that. Mm -hmm. I really was. I was, I was with God. I was going to mm -hmm. be with God. Um, and I was going to live out my days, however many I had left, you know, because when the doc comes in and says you have a 40% chance of survival, mm. you know, the, you know, you just kind of go, well, what did he say? 
-hmm. you know, and you need to have surgery today. And you're like, oh, wow. what did he say? And you're just, you know, but I, I'm just trying to be in tune with my spirit. So um, I, I would really pray that God would settle you deep in his loving arms and um, just know that you are his beloved daughter and that no matter what happens to you, the best of your ability, this side of heaven, you want to love him, serve him, and know him and, and be at peace with God. Raymond, thank you so much. It's been oh, a real privilege to be with you. You've been a me. joy. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> and your perspectives on family and your life have been beautiful. Thank, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you. Thanks for being at home with us. Blessings to you all. Thank you. And I believe we got Joan Lewis, who's going to speak to us from Rome, so we want to go right to her now. Hey, Jim and Joy, it's wonderful to be with you here in Rome. And here we are, the start of a new EWTN television season, new shows, your show, and the start of a new season here in Rome, after what the Italians call the long summer pause of July and August. And what's going to be fun is to bring you news from the Vatican on all family-related issues, papal speeches, documents, events from pontifical councils, and so forth. And speaking of news, this Sunday at 9 a.m. in St. Peter's Basilica, Pope Francis will marry 20 couples. He's the Bishop of Rome, and all couples have been chosen from the Diocese of Rome. Now, the last Pope to marry couples publicly was Pope John Paul, St. John Paul, who in October 2000 married eight couples in St. Peter's Square. The Italians say a wet bride is a lucky bride. These were really fortunate. There was a deluge that day because I was there to see it. Now, all of this is going to happen Sunday's weddings, just weeks before the important synod on the family. But back to Pope Francis for a minute. On June 2nd, he welcomed 15 couples to Mass at the Santa Marta. And he told them that marriage is marked by three traits. These were couples celebrating 25 to 60 years of marriage. And he said a successful marriage is based on fidelity, perseverance, and fruitfulness. And he said, all are necessary in good times and difficult times, but, said the Pope, love perseveres. It always moves forward and seeks to resolve things in order to save the family. Back to you, Jim and Joy. Oh, thank you, Joan. When we come back, we'll have Father John Paul Mary with us and an update on the World Meeting of Families. So don't go away. We'll be right back. back. Well, right now we have Father John Paul with us, and we want to welcome him to At Home with Jim and Joy. We're excited that you're here, Father. And I was excited to be asked, uh, Doug Keck sent an email to Father Anthony asking if uh, two of our friars, myself and Father Leonard, would be available to just be on the, the closing segment, uh, give a short little uh, kind of fervorino thing, and then mm -hmm. a final blessing to our family. Yeah. Um, speaking of the family, I think really the topic is about the family, um, at the canonization of St. John Paul II. Don't you love saying that? I love that. St. John yes. Paul II and St. John the XXIII. Uh, pope Francis called jo St. John Paul II the Pope of the family. Mm. Did you catch that? Yes. The Pope of the family. And I think, you know, we have to look at, especially this uh, uh, synod that the bishops are going to be going in here, John Paul II and his teachings are going to be the lens upon the bishops are looking at mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. And he had such a beautiful gift to bring to the church, to the family. You know, he was our spiritual father for how many years? Almost 30 years. So he was just such a gift to the church. So I think, you know, that's what I just wanted to say today yeah. is John Paul II, St. John Paul II yeah. is, is someone that we should invoke yeah. for the family. Yeah especially the bishops as they enter into the synod. And that leads us right into a special clip that we have, the unveiling of the official icon for the World Meeting of Families. You're going to love this. Let's take a look.
what I wanted to focus on is the centrality of Christ in the painting, which of course we know should be the center of all of our lives and certainly of our families. So hopefully the idea with the painting is to make sure that wherever you end up looking, ultimately your eye always comes back to Christ who is looking at you. And with the hand of blessing right in the center of the painting, blessing you hopefully when you see it and blessing the family. I tried to pull in some of the architecture of the cathedral here. Um, there's the, on the upper left side is the uh, coat of arms of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. On the upper right side is the coat of arms of Pope Francis, Holy Father. And I tried to mimic to some degree the, uh, the architecture here to make sure that when you look at the painting, you can see that it was meant for the cathedral and you can see that how the, the architecture ties into the space that it's located within. And then the relationship of Mary and Joseph and the other two figures? It's Mary and Joseph and Anna and Joachim, so we have the entire extended family of Jesus. You know, when I was contacted uh, two years ago by Pope Benedict to uh, consider being at the location for the next meeting of the World Meeting of Families, meeting place, I didn't want to accept the invitation because I thought it would be too much work. And as you know, we've had a lot of difficulties here in Philadelphia over the last several years. And the last thing we needed is something more complicated to confuse us and complicate our lives. But I was wrong. You know, this is a great opportunity that God is giving us, an undeserved grace, as all grace is undeserved, to be renewed and to start again. Because the place, always the place to start again is our family. Now the family is a school of love, right? It's where we learn to love genuinely and seriously. If we don't learn to love in our family, I don't know that we learn it anywhere. So our prayer during this year of preparation should be that the people of Philadelphia model for the rest of the church in the United States and the church in the world because God has given us this responsibility here in 2015 to be the location of the world meaning of families. The world is coming here to learn about family life. We, the people of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, have the duty to teach them what this means by the way we live our lives. God and Father of us all, in Jesus your Son and our Savior, you have made us your sons and daughters in the family of the church. May your grace and love help our families in every part of the world be united to one another in fidelity to the gospel. May the example of the Holy Family, with the aid of your Holy Spirit, guide all families, especially those most troubled, to be homes of communion and prayer, and to always seek your truth and live in your love. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us. Powerful peace. Remember, you're an important part of the family, and you're always at home with Jim and Joy. Father, a final blessing. Family, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. We're here for you. You're never alone. Jesus said in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. God bless you.